and welcome to Catholic Current, where we give you an update on events affecting the church in the United States. From Washington, D.C., I'm Mara Moser. This Sunday begins the liturgical season of Advent. This is a time of preparation leading up to the celebration of Christmas. Here to talk with us about this special season is Father Dustin Doubt from the Secretariat of Divine Worship. Thank you for joining us, Father Doubt. Thank you for having me, Mara. So just generally, what is Advent? You know, the season of Advent is a preparation for the coming of Christ. And we can think about that coming of Christ in a couple of different ways. Uh, we remember uh, Christ's historical coming, you know, when he was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the prophets who foretold that coming. Uh, we can think of his coming at the end of the ages. The Lord has promised us that he will come again, that he will judge the living and the dead, that he will uh, give the gift of the resurrection to those who have died. And we can also think about his coming in grace. And that's something that happens every day. So we think of uh, the past when Christ has come, uh, the present when Christ comes, and the future when he is coming. And Advent really is a season uh, for us to, uh, to wait, to expect that coming of Christ in the present, and also to expect that coming of Christ in the future, all while uh, meditating on how he's come in the past. Advent is a really special season, and there are a lot of devotions that people have and may celebrate in their homes, one of which is the Advent wreath. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what the Advent wreath represents and how it helps prepare us for the Nativity of Christ? One of the, the big symbols of the season of Advent is light and darkness. Uh, we see that just historically, that the season of Christmas and Advent emerges uh, in the northern hemisphere. <laughs> and so it's always in winter. And so historically, uh, as the days are getting shorter, as light is becoming um, uh, less, as it's diminishing, um, the church uh, lights candles as uh, a remembrance of that light that never ceases, of that light that never fades. And so we long for that eternal light. We read in the book of Revelation uh, that the temple has no light because the lamb is its light. And so we look to that lamb and as we get closer to the celebration of Christmas, we light a first, a second, a third, and then a fourth uh, candle in expectation. One of those candles, three of them are purple, but one of them we know is rose. Uh, and that rose, that third Sunday of Advent, we call it uh, Gaudete Sunday, Rejoice Sunday. Um, and that rose uh, is a symbol of the coming dawn of Christmas. We know in the morning when we look over the horizon, sometimes we see that, that little pink that comes just before the sun rises. And that pink candle, that pink during the season of Advent, is a sign to us that dawn is almost here that Christ is, has almost uh, come. So that Advent wreath is a way for us to measure time, a way for us to expect the fullness uh, of, of light, uh, which will come at Christmas time, which will come at the end of the ages. Thank you very much for that beautiful reflection on the Advent wreath. You can learn more about Advent at usccb.org slash advent. The month of November is National Black Catholic History Month. In recognition of this important celebration, we spoke with Sister Marsha Hall with the Oblate Sisters of Providence about the order, which was the first successful Roman Catholic sisterhood in the world established by women of African descent. Thank you very much, Sister Marsha, for hosting us here You're at uh, the Mother House. Very pleased to be here. I wonder just to start off if you would talk a little bit about the foundress of the order. Okay. Elizabeth Clarissa Lang was born in Cuba, came here around 1812, established a school in her home for the children of Haitian refugees with a friend, and was approached by Father Joubert, a Sulpician priest, to see if she would, she and her friend would be teachers in his new school. And they talked and he decided maybe a religious community would be better. And she said, you know, we've been waiting 10 years for this. So he went to the archbishop. The archbishop gave his permission for both. So the school was founded in 1828, St. Francis School for Colored Girls. And then on July 2nd, 1829, the three of them plus one of their students 
became the first four Oblate Sisters of Providence. Now, Elizabeth, then, be, who became Mother Lang, we feel was a visionary person. She certainly tried to meet people where they were and tried to meet their needs. So from the beginning, there were children of the house. And children of the house were orphans and half orphans. I bet you never heard that term before. Half orphan is a child who has one living parent who either cannot or will not take care. So they had children living with them from the beginning. So that meant, well, not only were they responsible for their own upkeep, but also the upkeep of the children. So it was the school that things were, things were popping with the school, as people would say now. You know, people were bringing their, children, their girls, whether they were Catholic or not, whether they could pay or not, the sisters taught them. And then women were knocking on the door asking, can I become an Oblate sister? Anne Marie Beecraft, for example. At 15, she founded a school in Georgetown. She came here and became an Oblate sister. So Mother Lang's little idea of a religious community for women of color is now 194 years old. So her legacy lives on in the 43 of us who are now Oblate Sisters of Providence. We always ask for prayers for Mother Lang's beatification and canonization, as well as prayers for vocations to the Oblate Sisters of Providence. So please join us in that. All right, thank you very much, Sister Marcia. Venerable Mother Mary Elizabeth Lang is one of the six black Catholic leaders on the road to sainthood. You can learn more about these holy men and women online at usccb.org. Pope Francis is recovering from an illness, which caused him to cancel his plans to travel to Dubai this week. He did hold his weekly general audience. At the end of the audience, Pope Francis spoke about the need for peace. Auspico che prosegua la tregua in corso. I hope that the ceasefire in Gaza continues so that all the hostages will be released and access to necessary humanitarian aid will still be allowed. I heard from the parish there there is a lack of water, a lack of bread, and people are suffering. It is the simple people, the people who suffer. It is not those who make war who suffer. We ask for peace. And let us not forget, speaking of peace, the dear Ukrainian people who suffer so much still at war. Brothers and sisters, War is always a defeat. Everyone loses. Well, not everyone. There is one group that earns a lot, those who manufacture weapons. They make a lot off the death of others. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Catholic Current. You can find out more about any of this week's topics by visiting us online at usccb.org or follow us on social media at usccb. I'm Mara Moser. See you next week. Mm -hmm.